Good morning, friends and family. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I wanted to come on and review. Um, there's a lot that's happened and I've processed a lot and it's been so amazing, really. Just coming back, expressing some things, really having a hard time with some of the things that are uh, kind of uh, oh, just going into the goo, I guess. Like as the butterfly goes into the chrysalis or the cocoon, or the caterpillar, the caterpillar goes into the into the chrysalis and um, turns itself into goo. So it's a lot of that. It's um, yeah, the ooh and the ew and the woo and the goo. So yeah, the ooh, the ew, the woo and the goo. Yeah, just like oh, just dissolving and. just it's just such a weird process like just dissolving into this goo and then all the impurities and everything are just yeah cleansed away and alchemized and transformed into something new and so nothing is wasted and all of that and um yeah it's early early in the morning I haven't been able to sleep I've been having sleep disturbances for the last couple of weeks and uh, just waking up like really early, like at three or four in the morning and not being able to go back to sleep for a couple hours. And yeah, just kind of doing my best with that. And um, I thought I'd do something new this morning instead of laying in bed wanting to sleep, but being mad about not being able to sleep and just do something different and shake things up and and um, yeah, actually review and share a couple things that I actually received uh, during, you know, my uh, last steps in my process, my last stages <laughs> of my unraveling and unfurling and everything and dissolving, just like fermenting, going through that fermentation process <laughs> and that mortification. And so um, a lot of the things is about perception and the seen and the unseen and our own blind spots, the blind guardian. Yeah, bringing the light into the darkness, uh, seeing what we were in the dark about, seeing what we need to see, um, even though it might not be easy and it's not something we want to see or that really feels good at first, but... <laughs> yeah, that's just the way it is and gets to be right now. Um, a little harsh, but um, pretty beautiful too. And so, yeah, there's been like kind of a lot of synchronicities around um, what are we seeing and what are we not seeing, you know, and um, yeah, the conscious and the unconscious and all of those things and um being willing to see or being willing to trust and uh, follow what comes. Like the, the woman in white, the girl in white, the hamless maiden who needs to surrender and follows the spirit in white for whatever's next, whatever comes. Yeah. That uh, messenger from the spirit world. Mm -hmm. So the messenger, yeah, that's come up a lot. Um, yeah, so many things. So I was having a hard time, going through a hard time, going through a dark night of the soul, um, feeling very jagged in here lately, um, having some kind of eruptions, but like working with it and smoothing the edges and refining and polishing <laughs> this beautiful stone. Um, and here I had a visualization, a healing session the other day and, uh, not too long after I spoke and shared my last video and, uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting. Mm. My friend who was, you know, doing my Reiki session. Yeah. She said, Oh, there's some jagged, jagged edges. <laughs> Seems like let's just soften those edges and polish that and refine just a little bit and, so just uh, feeling a little bit more, I guess, uh, allowing and, uh, 
you know, more soft in, in this area here. Yeah, I had been, I was, yeah, just having a hard time expressing some of those emotions and it was a little bit awkward and a little bit uh, unusual for me to express myself in certain ways, but it just, because of the passion and the energy, the fiery energy and everything, it just, that's just how, just kind of wanted to let it move and be expressed and everything, so pretty funny um, and awesome and just cool letting myself be in that awkward process and um, a couple days after I'd shared that I, I saw a video about what does it mean to be in process and uh, it was so perfect and it was all about the butter the caterpillar and the butterfly as well and so I'm going to put that in the description box because it was really good gold to follow and then um, yeah like seeing about, you know, seeing how we judge our process and how we think things are supposed to look when we're healing or we're, we're cultivating wellness, we're, um, you know, choosing different choices that contribute to our wellness. And sometimes there is a process where it looks like it's getting worse before it's getting better. Or, yeah, it's just different parts of the healing stages are a little more messy than others. And a little more stinky or like just not I guess is comfortable and just still yeah a little more awkward raw uh yeah a little bit like primal and feral yeah and a little more wild I guess so which is really funny because um yeah the feral woman's come up a lot where we've been domesticated for so long and we really want to be wild, but we're just, yeah, going through that feral stage of being in between both. <laughs> and, um, I, uh, that was a little bit of, uh, embarrassing. Um, embarrassing, a little bit, like, just to be seen as that, like a feral woman with you know, mud on her face, who had been wandering, wandering, wandering in the wilderness for so long and has these twigs in her hair and she looks like a fright. And um, and she comes into this orchard, into this king's orchard, and because she's following the spirit in white and the king and his magician, they see these two like uh, really ethereal kind of otherworldly looking uh figures these two women in their orchard and so um, the king asked the magician to ask them if you know is she of this world or the other world and she says of both I'm of both and the king recognizes her as his love not uh, in spite of like her appearance of her wild appearance wild and disheveled appearance but because of her state of yeah, unraveling and just, uh, dis like, kind of, yeah, chaotic <laughs> disarray and whatnot. Um, yeah, and he recognizes her as his own, as his own love, which is kind of really cool, like, with the masculine and the feminine, you know, the, the inner masculine and the inner feminine, when they can recognize each other and come into union together. And support each other and know that you know each of them is bringing a necessary and essential part to the whole to the union to the relationship and all of that and so and then just going through those different stages of healing that kind of look not like how we think they should look and not judging that like, like doing our best not to judge like our process and the stage of healing that we're in and yeah what we think we should be or what we think we should look like or how we think we should feel as we're going through it you know gotta let all of that go <coughs> yeah it's, and, and yeah just let it flow let it go so um yeah the, the perceptions and uh so many different stories that keep coming up like the the tale of Ishu and the double-sided hat um 
you have the two friends, this trickster god. Two friends were working in the field, and uh, they have, it's a long, long, long day, and oh, they're actually, they're just almost, like, just so wiped out from the whole entire day, about ready to be done with their day's work, and uh, a trickster comes in and rides past them on a beautiful horse, and his clothes are just so elegant, and he just looks like a very interesting, intriguing character, very dressed to the nines, and he has an amazing, like, top hat, which is hmm, <laughs> kind of interesting because I've done a little bit of looking at, like, yeah, different kinds of hats and different things like that that we wear. And, uh, yeah, some of the symbolism around different kinds of hats. So it's interesting, super interesting. Anywho, <laughs> this trickster guide, he comes in and he's... Um, wanted to test these friends to see how how strong their friendship really was and what they were made of and all that and so um one of the one of the friends is on the left side and one of the other friends is on the right side and he comes in right through the middle of the fields and so each one gets a different perspective of this trickster guy but they don't know <laughs> yeah at the time what they don't know so yeah they don't know what they don't know which is pretty pretty silly as well. Um, yeah, looking into those things, um, how we're ignorant to our ignorance <laughs> sometimes, and we're missing, we're missing a big piece um, <laughs> of the puzzle and what um, what really is. We can only see so much. We can only see sometimes half of the equation, and we're missing the other half. And so we haven't been able to see very fully. There's a lot we've been missing. There's a big big blind spot that we that we all have and we like to think that we're seeing everything as it is and sometimes it's not the truth it's not the case and so yeah um so one friend on the left side he sees that this gentleman has um a beautiful white hat and uh the one on the right sees that it's a, such a beautiful amazing designer black hat and so yeah, they both were very impressed with the way that this gentleman was dressed and the way that he carried himself. He just had some kind of glimmer or some kind of glamour. And they just, they couldn't put that image out of their mind. It wasn't something they saw every day. So, um, yeah, they went to go hang out and sit on the porch and, and enjoy some beverages and, um, yeah, relax after the long day of work. And they both had to mention you know, the gentleman, the fine gentleman that they saw that day, uh, you know, because it was quite an interesting, yeah, sight. And so, yeah, one of them said, and oh, that was just the most amazing black hat <laughs> I've ever seen. And the other friend goes, what? <laughs> it was a white hat. That was like a freaking amazing white hat. And they keep arguing, no. You know, because one saw the black, one saw the white. And they almost end up killing them, each other over who's right about this because the other one obviously thinks he's right and the other friend's wrong because, of, because they both know what they saw. So obviously, you know, they think that what the other, what their friend saw was incorrect. And so they have to, they've been put in this position, this polarized position where somebody has to be right and somebody has to be wrong. You know, because that's just <laughs> how we've been, like, kind of steered or forced into, like, these camps of, oh, if you believe X, then you also believe Y, Z. Or if you believe A, then you also need to believe B, C. Or, but, like, wait, people are way more nuanced and have, like, so many more, like, different experiences and different filters and different, um, you know, biases so it's interesting um, to see that <laughs> it's interesting so we've been kind of stuck in that persecuted persecutor place where we want the other person to change their mind and to see that we're right um, we've been right all along they just need to stop being so stubborn and accept it and accept the truth or they're the asshole you know um, you got to see it my way. You got to see it my way. I'm the one that's right. You're the one that's wrong, you know, kind of a thing. Like somebody has to be 
And what if they're both right, but they're both wrong at the same time? And so it's just so funny, like just looking at that story about how we get so angry at each other and we're really friends and we forget, you know, the, the truth of our relationships and, and that everybody sees things differently. Everybody's shown different things depending on what they already believe or we see, we perceive different things depending on our own biases. We, we like to make it fit into our own, yeah, our own story and our own, yeah, experience. So we sometimes do, yeah, miss a whole lot um, when we focus, yeah, on just certain things that reinforce our own identity or our own side or what we think is right or what we see is, yeah is being presented to us and it is it's so funny um just kind of looking at that and paralleling that to how i felt about how my some of my loved ones and my family members how they see and what they're being shown what they're being presented what they're you know agreeing to or what they what they think they know or Just understanding, though, because I've seen that. I mean, I've been on that side of the fence. Um, so I understand, and I have room for them to have their perceptions, and I know what they're being shown, and I know what they're being presented, but I don't know how they're really interpreting it. Like, totally, I don't. That's what I'm missing. I don't know their nuances. I don't know like different things because we haven't been able to talk about things because it's, like, so triggering where, you know, I'm seeing, like, the white hat, they're seeing the black hat, or, you know, vice versa. So, but it is, like, a double-sided hat, where it is both. Yeah. One's, one is black, and one is white. One side is black, and one side is white. And so, just because, yeah, we're just kind of polarized on, on one side, doesn't mean that it's not a whole hat that has both sides to it. You know, and so if we can realize that and see more into that, I think that would help a lot. So with that magic hat. And so, um, yeah, the friends, they almost end up killing each other and all these other neighbors get involved trying to break up their fight. And they're just like, what could have happened? Because these were the bestest friends for like decades and decades and decades, you know. And all of a sudden, like this one thing that they don't agree on like, makes them want to kill each other. Uh, it's just like, you know. Um. <laughs> well, anyways, the trickster god comes back because he had his fun and he's just like, oh, okay, well, this is, there's a good lesson for you. Um, he's, and he, uh, he comes over to the porch, sits on, he's like, okay, fellas, you know. Um, what you didn't see was that it was a, you know, two-sided. You did see the black, you did see the white, <laughs> but you didn't know <laughs> that that was the case. So you were both right, but you were wrong at the same time. And so, yeah, just kind of seeing like where we can challenge our own biases and, uh, and kind of open to our own blind spots. Um, I know that we have blind spots and know that there are certain things that we don't know because it's more dangerous to not know what you don't know. I mean, to be ignorant of what you don't know. And um, there was actually like a huge thing in that for me last year about um, that exact same thing in Women Who Run With The Wolves. It was all about ignorance and uh, yeah, the different things. And it all like, it actually correlates pretty well with the Dunning-Kruger effect and I know, like, the people use that, like, to make other people wrong. It's kind of funny how we learn, like, different lingo. And um, sometimes we just use it to project on other people as they're the ones that have cognitive dissonance, not us. It's so funny. But, like, we all have our own biases and, and dissonance and things that we don't want to look at sometimes and that are hard to see or that maybe, like, our ego just won't let us see because, yeah, there's some stuff there. But sometimes our soul will yeah will help us see certain things 
through different nudges or different or states of consciousness consciousness and dreams and um yeah sometimes just yeah just following little threads or being willing or having courage and asking can i you know please help me see what i need to see maybe i'll see what we need to see you know maybe we see things for as they really are and as we really are and and see through her gentle eyes and all of that and so yeah seeing and perceptions and see the seen and the unseen and all of those things so um and I just feel like, too, like, yeah, the unseen realms. That's, that's a huge, huge influence, you know. Yeah, we can empower ourselves more if, we, if we're able to see some of those or be aware or feel our way through some of those things. And so, yeah. So owl, obviously, the totem owl is coming up a lot, and um, so cute. <laughs> There's a Winnie the Pooh <laughs> owl, just like drew on the fly uh, for my little granddaughter because she loves all the Winnie the Pooh characters, and she really, 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 really loves owl for some reason. That's like one of her favorites, and <laughs> so it's really super cute, and. Um, yeah, so I picked up my Medicine Cards book um, by Jamie Sams and David Carson like um, a couple days ago because Al just kept coming up, Al, Al, Al. And um, yeah, I read through that and I just wrote a little bit about it. But it is um, being able to see through deception and being able to see in the dark. And, and uh, Al is like that uh, totem of wisdom and yeah, Athena, the goddess of wisdom, had an owl on her shoulder that would help her um, because she had a blind side, but it helped her overcome her blind side so that she could know and speak the whole truth rather than half a truth. So I thought that was super interesting to see that. And I'm going to see if there's anything I want to include in that for owl. So it's associated with clairvoyance, astral projection, magic, both black and white. Owl is called Night Eagle on several medicine wheels used by um, Ameridin, oh, Amerindian teachers. Traditionally, owl sits in the east, the place of illumination. Since time immemorial, humanity has been afraid of the night, the dark, and the unseen, waiting fearfully for the first crack of morning light. Conversely, night is owl's friend. And so Al hunts at night, I can see in the dark, can pinpoint, accurately pinpoint and identify any sound. This gives it a great advantage. And so they're night hunters and their feathers are silent. Some native people call them deceiver feathers because you cannot hear Al when it flies. But uh, yeah, the prey definitely knows when it strikes because the beak and the talons are so razor sharp. So it is silent and deadly. <laughs> But Al is some, oftentimes the medicine of sorcerers and witches. And um, yeah, if Al is your medicine, you'll be drawn to magical practices and perhaps explore like the dark arts, which, yeah, I don't, yeah, that could be interpreted several ways. You should resist any temptation to practice black magic or any art that takes energy away from another person or being. Definitely and for sure. That's, yeah want to honor and respect and the sacred and other people's autonomy and our own sovereignty and um, not participate in violations you know so if you have any owl medicine these night birds will have a tendency to collect around you even in the daytime because they recognize a kinship with you and so owl is a symbol for wisdom owl can see that which can, cannot um this is because Al can see that which others cannot, yeah. which is the essence of true wisdom. When others are deceived, Al sees and knows what is there. So, yeah. So it's all about asking to and seeing through. So 
If Allah is your personal medicine, no one can deceive you about what they are doing, no matter how they try to disguise it or hide it from you. You may be a little frightening to be around since so many people have ulterior motives, which you see right through. If you are unaware of your medicine power, you may take your keen insights and abilities for granted. Others never do. You may frighten them and re reflect their blindness, for you cannot be fooled. Owl medicine people know more about an individual's inner life than the person knows about herself or himself. If you pulled the owl, owl card, you are being asked to use your powers of keen, silent observation to intuit some life situation. Owl is befriending you and aiding you in seeing the total truth. Owl can bring you messages in the night through dreams or meditation. Pay attention to the signals and omens. The truth always brings further enlightenment. So, yep, that's just something, you know, that is in line and aligned with, yeah, seeing the truth and honoring the truth and speaking the truth, seeing the truth, embodying the truth. So truth is, you know, my one of my focus, one of my core focus words for this year. And um, a couple weeks ago, I opened up the Gospel of Thomas and flipped it open. And it says, know what is in front of your face. Understand what is in front of your face, and then what is hidden from you will be disclosed to you, for there is nothing hidden. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was like, wow. Just know what is in front of your face. Like, and know yourself, too. Understand what is, in, what is in front of your face, and then what is hidden from you will be disclosed to you, for there is nothing hidden. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Like, for the... Yeah, what are we seeing? What, yeah. What do we know? <laughs> yeah. So, let's see. I did just pick a, a few cards out of a, a healing circle deck, and one of them was uh, this third eye card. And it said, Clear and refresh, the third eye sees the truth. My soul is blessed and growing into a loving vision of exquisite evolution. So, there's a picture. And that is a sacred healing deck um, by Alana Fairchild, I think. One of my friends, yeah, sent it to me. And it's been a while since I pulled any cards or anything like that. So, I just thought, oh, that'll be fun to do that. So, I picked, I was only going to pick like, too, but there's a couple more that wanted to come out of there. And so, yeah. So the third eye, just um, growing into a loving vision. Yeah, my soul is blessed and growing into a loving vision. So my true vision. Yeah, my true vision. May I purify and cleanse and open my, and yeah, welcome in my, and expand into my true vision rather than my false image. So, yeah, putting more love and energy into the vision rather than the image. Yeah. And I feel like maybe that has to do, the vision has to do with the seen and the unseen, and the image only has to do with, yeah, maybe what is... Yeah, what well, we want other people to see. I don't know. Maybe there's some more deep looking into that. Yeah, so it might be fun to see. But, um, appreciating my soul and progress creates confidence and excitement to embrace new challenges and expand my spiritual horizons. Yeah, and my perspectives. And then I ground my energy, creating a safe, secure, and loving reality with the universe as my ally, I ground my energy, creating a safe, secure, and loving reality with the universe as my ally. The wild grace of the unpredictable reveals new directions that I trust and recognize as the way for happiness and divine fruition. The wild grace of the unpredictable reveals new directions that I trust and recognize as the way for happiness and divine fruition. And then the last one. Savoring life with gratitude gives rise to a crescendo of loving consciousness, shifting paradigms, and opening new creative pathways. 
savoring life with gratitude gives life, gives rise to a crescendo of loving consciousness, shifting paradigms, and opening new creative pathways. So yeah, so those are the good messages. Definitely to remind me, yeah, gratitude and trust and like letting it like be unknown and letting it be revealed and uh, just trusting and opening and appreciating and grounding and yeah, opening to that vision and all of that. So yeah, let's see. I know Larry's like so many, uh, yeah, so much more that came through after after um, doing that last video because uh, so many different things uh, were just like dropped in my lap after that like to help me to connect the dots and to weave the tapestry into a more coherent whole. Um, Oh yeah, it's about growing pains too. Growing pains, sometimes it doesn't feel good being in the goo. But yeah, just, yeah. Just letting go and uh, trusting and being true and yeah, letting go. Growing pains and letting go. Yeah, so many different uh, synchronicities with uh, ast astrology, like so many amazing things, really. It's so cool to see personal revolution and revelation and, and reversals and breakthroughs. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Disruptions, eruptions, challenges, conflicts, and breakthroughs. So, oh, it was super interesting. Um, a couple months ago, I had written an email to my dad just because I felt like there was, oh, just some stuff on my chest that I was really, really grieving and I just wanted him, like, I, I wanted to invite him to have a more authentic relationship and maybe develop and cultivate some intimacy since I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of love that we do share, but sometimes it's just like there's a huge ass elephant in the room and we can't really connect in certain ways and in intimate ways that I would like to. And so I just felt like I'm just going to share some stuff with him because I really need him to see and hear like some of this stuff. But um, I don't know how he's going to receive it or interpret it either. But that's not my, you know, I sat on it. I, I took a lot of time. It took me like a month or so like to just kind of sit with, be with. And then I finally did decide to send it. And it was really healing for me. And I could actually see a lot of what I needed and what I could be responsible for, um, um, what I could take accountability for, and the things I needed for me. I can't <clears throat> expect someone else to resolve anything for me. But it is nice like when two people come together when they're in a relationship and they can come to a resolution together and cooperate and for the integrity of the whole. Or, um, and it's really been interesting watching Heidi Preeb's videos because those are so affirming she's so gifted and like really blessed at, um in in certain um wisdom and uh, her techniques and everything she brings it down to earth it's so easy to understand she's very um yeah articulate and it's been grounded and like yeah it's so it's been so so such a delight and super helpful to to have a teacher who lays it out have different things and is very like in integrity within herself and you could tell she's done the shadow work and everything so I have super appreciated like looking at that um, especially around like avoidant attachment styles like the fearful avoidant the anxious avoidant and like yeah and the dismissive avoidant and um, those kinds of things, the scapegoat and the golden child, those sort of things, um, but definitely have some wounding, yeah, and baggage for me to look into. Uh, the scapegoat and the golden child, yeah, the good girl and the whore, like those things. Yeah, how, how... We kind of get stuck in 
in these roles, playing these roles because they were survival strategies or they were the adaptations. We had to adapt and we keep playing out the same roles and patterns, but they become maladaptive when we're older. And so, yeah, just kind of looking into all these things. And it's really, really amazing to see like how we can transform that and change your, you know, turn it around so that it is, you know, for me and we, it is for the whole and the one, you know. So perceptions, seeing, revelations, deception, blind spots, and illumination. Owl, medicine bird, please help me see and speak the whole truth. Yeah. Night eagle, night vision, seeing through the veils of distrust and suspicion, deception, manipulation, the abuses of power and desecration, distortions, confusion, chaos, illusion, the seen, the unseen, blind spots and the in-between, the blind guardian, what is being missed or what's missing, issue and the double-sided hat, calling back my love, my power, my energy, my life force, my right to be all I am. Let's focus on I am rather than I am not or I have. I choose joy, I choose peace, I choose self-love, self-respect, and self-mastery. I choose honor, I choose forgiveness, I choose freedom. I choose sovereignty, I choose love, I choose gratitude. I choose all this for all of me. And then like a couple weeks ago, I was uh, I was inspired by my aunt who she had shared what she was releasing and letting go of a couple weeks ago and that really did like, okay, I'm gonna do that too, yeah, because it'd been a while since I've been kind of like tracking certain things and and writing in my journal, but I've been actually writing on my phone more than I have like with paper and pen. It's kind of interesting. I kind of slowed down with my writing um, because it had been having like some kind of tennis elbow or some kind of weird stuff. And so just kind of, yeah, kind of let, let, kind of let that very important practice kind of just drop for a couple months. And I could tell how much of a difference it makes when I pick it back up and I can, it helps me process and sort through things way easier. Yeah. So, (laughs) so pretty much what I was going to release, you know, I was like, I'm, you know, releasing um, the self-hatred, the self-loathing, these judgments, these expectations, like, and some of these old dreams as well. They're not meant for me. So, um, and I surrender and I'll let it be. And then yes, yes to life and yes to love and yes to knowing God and yes to soul, yes to self, yes to knowing the other, yes to um, knowing the other through the mirror of intimacy and the heart of intimacy. Yeah, through love and grace and inclusivity and like allowing that other to have their things and their journey and their path and their experiences and their perceptions and not having to have them need to change so that I'm okay it's kind of I just want them to see me as okay but if they can't like that's not about me so easy (laughs) please let's start over easy peasy pudding pie easy pleasy bye 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 easy please and no I'll die easy peasy free am I Easy peasy, bye bye bye. Easy peasy, I will fly. LOL, not gonna please and deny my eye, my sight, my right, my life, my space, my fight, my autonomy, my right to be, my love for me, my well being's needs, and I still get to love and be kind. Yeah, bestest ever, really all around to stop avoiding honest conflicts and discomfort. Ah, oh, it just like reminds me of the. And I'm going to put this one because this one was huge for me. How people pleasing kills intimacy and honest conflict can build it. Like who knew? Yeah. Like I always knew like I hate not being able to confront things or address things or resolve things or yeah, which is honest conflicts. To stop avoiding honest conflicts. Because that is like. to have a con- confrontation to something that needs to be addressed instead of avoiding it. Like that is care. 
even though it's going to be uncomfortable or there might be a momentary eruption or it's not going to be comfortable or it's a little, yeah, it's a little unpredictable and there's got to be some vulnerability and some pride sometimes relinquished, you know, so avoiding, yeah, honest conflicts and discomfort, trying to make everybody comfortable, trying to please. Confronting things in an emotionally mature way to develop more emotional and spiritual psychological maturity and grow and own and integrate the shadow and the unclaimed power that I do have and have been given as love for love through love, all this love. Here it is. Here am I. Stop judging all of it and be present to experience it. My, oh my. So yeah, this is the, some of the things and streams, baby eggs. Or, oh, baby dragon eggs. <laughs> Dragons, fire, water, air, earth. Yeah, ether, lamb and lion, doves. Yeah, Leo the lion. Um, serpents, birds of all kinds. And, and oh, quails, quails. Quails came around the other day. Um, naming and unnaming and renaming things, yeah. And then just cute little family and their cute little... <laughs> feathers on their head and their cute little um jerky little walk that's so like freaking cute oh my god <laughs> uh spirits of the air water nymphs mermaids water and aquatic beings whales dolphins all ocean creatures fish pisces um march spring is sprung this was i guess this is back in march in my journal here since i've been doing so much writing uh, on my phone and you know stuff so um Acceleration, snail pace, lol. <laughs> Eggs, chickens, and cocks. It's the spiral, the spiral, the spiral. Reciproc reciprocity, relationships, harmony, and the onk. Um, oh my goodness, been having lots of dreams about babies. <laughs> about babies, so it's been so fun. Um, yeah, the end of ruminating. And endlessly going back and forth on the story wheel, like, yeah, and the pendulum. Preventing and avoiding feeling fully the pain, the hurt, the anger, the shame. Like spiritual bypassing. So, spiritual awakening, spiritual maturity, spiritual hygiene, spiritual innocence, spiritual healing, spirituality, spiritual mastery. Spiritual, yeah, love, truth, and embodying. Embodying, honoring, presencing, detaching, surrendering, receiving, offering, letting go discerning, alchemizing, shifting, and transforming, processing, letting go. I'm gratefully releasing self-loathing, self-hatred, and demoralization, and self-destructive programming, and all of those incorrect and distorted perceptions of myself and others. I am releasing the old toxic beliefs um, of control and domination, that wound of separation. I am releasing, yeah, all of this pain around betrayal, trauma, and, uh, persecution so I'm calling back my love my power my energy my life force my right to be all I am yay the seen and the unseen and all of those things so yeah uh, there's a lot more to follow through on next time and so love y'all hope you're well I'm gonna go see if I can go back to sleep for a little while if, um, for now and uh, yeah take good care of yourselves yeah what are we seeing? What might be missing? Like, what can we see now that we haven't let ourselves see before? Like, what? yeah, what can, what can we open to? What can we ask to see more deeply into? All those things. So, intimacy. Yeah, seeing deeply into me. Intimacy, I see into me. Seeing into me. Intimacy. Yeah, and what intimacy, yeah, really, really brings. And how fertile that can be yeah, when we allow ourselves that. And no more self-abandoning. Yeah. Being, being, and becoming. And loving and living and embodying. And healing and holding and processing. Yeah, all these things. Love and, yeah. Love your being. Being love for all of, all of you, all of me, all of we. Yeah, all the things. All the sweetness. Yeah, all the spring. All that's coming into being from the seen and the unseen. Yeah, working together. Yeah, this whole thing. Okay, love y'all. See you later.
Take care. Bye for now.